Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Kurt Schuler of Arturus IP, who's going to talk today about end-to-end -end traceability. Kurt, we're dealing with a very extended and disaggregated design through manufacturing chain. How do you pull all those pieces together? What sort of problems are you running into? Well, as we've looked into this, we've seen that it's, it's really an enterprise problem within um, our semiconductor, uh, traditional semiconductor manufacturers, as well as design teams at you know larger system companies who are who are designing their own chips. And you know, as we looked into the issues that people have, you know, with compliance with ISO 26262 and IEC 61508 and other functional safety standards, and just even quality standards, we found that even though there's these great best of breed. Uh, products to handle different things like requirements and specifications, of course, EDA and software engineering tool flows um, and documentation. Uh, these uh, uh, places or these, these uh, silos are not necessarily connected. And so when you're tracing, you know, what happens when I make a change here in this design, how does it affect requirements? How does it affect, you know, uh, the customer at the end and what the product can do? Uh, being able to, to understand the effects of these changes uh, requires a lot of manual work and also uh, when you're going through assessments there's a lot of manual work and inspection you know for confirmation measures to ensure that um, as as we go through the process that any changes in requirements or implementation um, or delivery are reflected all throughout the product life cycle let's take a closer look sure Kurt what are we looking at here so what we're looking at here is a, a kind of a general product life cycle uh, diagram. If you're familiar with any of the functional safety specifications or quali quality specific or standards, you're familiar with the VV diagram. And that's what this is. It's simplified. And in time, if you look at it, we have some requirements. Those get built into specifications. The different hardware and software teams then use those specifications to design and implement their products. We do verification and test. On, on, the, on those parts of the products and the product itself. And then we do QA and documentation. So these uh, standards, they specify traceability between each of these different places here. So we call this along the V. So there has to be some traceability here. So if you make a change anywhere else, it, you make a change in the spec, it changes a requirement, it changes an implementation. Also, there is traceability across the V. So, for example, when you're done with your product, your QA people are comparing the product's features and capabilities versus the requirements that were specified at the beginning. And the documentation is also based upon that. We've seen this in automotive. Does it apply to other industries as well? Yes, it does. Uh, so IEC 61508 covers, um, think of it this way, any uh, electronic systems. Uh, we, we call them electronic electrical system, EE, uh, that do have a functional safety goal. So meaning that when you design the product, if the electronics, if they don't perform correctly, it could hurt somebody. And this just improves reliability of almost anything. So you think about a uh, data center chip, they want these things to work perfectly for a long time, right? Yes, even though reliability is like a separate academic discipline, what we do here does help reliability. Uh, also, if you go into details on some things, you know, you use the same kind of processes to deal with things like security and designing security in your system. So the thought process helps you just with general quality. One of the problems that people run into when they're designing these systems is that it's a very disaggregated supply chain. So you have lots of heterogeneous components, even in a single chip. How does this work in this case? Uh, which includes reliability, functional safety, and security. Yeah, that's one of the big problems with the semiconductor industry. So if you look at this type of diagram and you look at, let's say you're doing something mechanical, let's say you're, you're doing a, a brake system and you're making some calipers. Well, you're gonna put this into SolidWorks or your design's gonna be in SolidWorks or Katia. Uh, you can even keep all of your requirements, your specifications, all this stuff can go into those big products. We, we call those either product lifecycle management or application uh, lifecycle management products. Semiconductor is different. Uh, the way it involves is we have some very specialized tools on the EDA side of things, um, as well as in the software, and of course, verification and test. And everybody wants to use you know, the best tool for the job within these different domains. So what that means for us is that we have different silos, if you will. We have different systems for requirements. This might be um, IBM Doors or JAMA Connect. You know, here in specifications, 
you know, the lowest common denominator is Microsoft Word, but we have Dita uh, type systems where, for example, Adobe FrameMaker, Structured FrameMaker is used. We have people using Atlassian and Confluence for specifications. In here, we have very semiconductor industry specific tools, and of course the EDA tool flow chain. Uh, same thing in software, but it's not just those types of tools. It's also what you use to build your product. So we're talking here Git, Bamboo, Jenkins, Docker, all of that different flow. And then over here, uh, we also have similar tools that uh, we use on documentation as we use for specifications. One of the problems here is that not everything is using the same kind of data. How do you pull all that together? That's the challenge. So without any automation, what you're doing here is you're having a lot of manual design reviews uh, between these different silos, these different, these different green blobs. And what happens, especially, you know, here it's easy. When, when a change happens somewhere later in time, that change is not always reflected forward or aft as you go through the process. So what we've had to do is say, okay, there are some standards for describing requirements. There are some standards in here for describing different parts of a specification. There's lots of standards in here that are semiconductor specific. And so what we've done is we've taken our knowledge of all of this and be able to, we're able to trace changes made in any one of these things with the requirements all the way through the different artifacts within here at an elemental level. And we're able to use our knowledge of everything that's going on in the EDA flow to help automate uh, establishing that traceability and maintaining that traceability over time. Is there any problem in terms of companies that don't want their data shared with other different companies? So you've got a full chain going here, but you may have competitors in there as well. Yes, and it's always been, uh, when it comes to standards amongst these systems and data sharing within these systems, it's always been a, a, tough, a tough thing from a business standpoint. Because I mentioned before those, um, those application lifecycle management, product lifecycle management, you know, that's like one tool to rule them all. And the, the economic value proposition for the tool vendor is to lock you in to using that. Whereas in the semiconductor world, we really do like to use you know, the best tool for the job and have the flexibility to do that. So there are some standards. There's RecIF, there's uh, uh, OSLC, there's of course IPExact, which covers a lot of this. There, there's DITA, uh, there's all these different standards. Um, and what we've done is take those standards and be able to create kind of an engine that interrelates the semantics of those standards so that you can have that traceability. So basically what you've done here is take your background in terms of developing network on chip and expanded it across the entire supply chain, right? In a way, yes. It's kind of the combination of what the former Magellan Design Systems, which, you know, our Terrace IP acquired uh, th this time last year in, in November of last year and in 2020, along with that network on chip knowledge, uh, because both of those technologies touch everything on the chip, and be able to take that and then apply that to the broader problem of, hey, how do we get this SOC out the door sooner without having to slow ourselves down so much on manual inspection, manual reviews, confirmation measures, um, and of course, just the quality issues that come with, oh yeah, we forgot you made that change, and okay, we'll go back and make it. Traceability isn't new in the industry. We've been talking about this even going way back to the days of EDI where they had to be able to trade information between suppliers. What's new here? Well, what's new here is we've specifically focused on the semiconductor and that kind of a close to the hardware software industry, you know, the, the, the embedded software industry. And since we understand so much of what those artifacts, we call them artifacts, but that, that's how the code is produced, the, the IP exact metadata around it, the different tools and scripts that are used to run your automation through here. We're able to take that knowledge and apply that to the broader problem. So we're stepping in in an area where, um, you know, if a company outside of se uh, semiconductor design tried to do this, you know, they'd probably be lost because there's so much semiconductor specific knowledge that has to go into creating this link and it's a semantic uh, taxonomy link from all the different uh, capabilities are going here from linking those requirements to all the different artifacts which you know that could be a sentence within a document it could be a feature within a product it could be a test uh, to test that that requirement was done so it's the semiconductor knowledge that allows us to provide something that's of, of value to people who still want to be able to use the best tool for the job within their design flow
Has this evolved consistently over the years, or is it something where the automotive electronics, for example, are saying, we need this right now? It, it, it has evolved. You know, if you look at in the past, you know, I've looked at the history, you know, working with the, the former Magellan folks and, you know, work has been going on for this for years. And, you know, it's been kind of a gleam in the eye. But now that we have, um, you know, customers who are doing very complex chips and they're in automotive, it's like a double whammy. So uh, it's impossible to do all of that uh, work from a quality standpoint manually anymore. And so, you know, our, our lead uh, customers for this, one of them's an automotive semiconductor manufacturer, and the other one's actually a tier one uh, who is, is um, building their own chips, but also building, you know, larger systems. Kurt Schuller, thanks for a great explanation. Thanks, Ed.